So this is pretty dark for a made-for-TV movie, but because it's so badly written and terribly acted, it's still pretty easy to laugh at. <laughs> it is. <laughs> also known as a deadly seduction, this is 2019's Deviant Love. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. Right from the off, I had to ask myself, should I really be watching this? And here's why. This game is not fun. Come on, don't you want to play my games? Where's my mommy? Now you have to play my games. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Stop crying for your mommy. No, no, no. Goodness. Try if you can to put that to the back of your mind while we meet grown-up Jamie. She's the main character. Hi. She's just moved back to her hometown because her marriage has broken down. Sadly for her and the audience, she has an awful child called Preston. When Jamie bumps into her old friend Bonnie at this bakery, this happens. Do you remember Bonnie? No. Nope. <laughs> so you get the idea. Yep. Like most child actors, this one is appalling. However, he's not the worst actor in this film, but more on that later. It's at this point that we find out that Jamie used to be Miss Northern California. Then she bumps into this guy and spills coffee all over him. Preston thinks this is hilarious. That funny? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I guess it kind of is. No, it's not. This is wit, and he's awful, and he and Preston bond over baseball. I love baseball. This guy is up there with the very worst actors I've ever seen. Anyway, Wit's like, so Jamie, I overheard your friend saying you used to be Miss Northern California. And she's like, yeah, I don't like to talk about it though, as it was kind of a weird curse. Anyway, see you later. And then she leaves. So now she's back at her parents' house. This is her mum, Marlene, and her dad, Boone. Come again? Yes, Boone. Her mum's like, how long are you staying? And Jamie's like, don't know, depends what happens with Rick. Rick is her husband, and they're having a few problems. When is daddy coming? He isn't. <laughs> Jamie's sister Casey has come over, and after dinner... How's Rick? I don't really know. Well, maybe you guys just need to talk it out. Yeah, we tried that. Marriage is hard work, honey. He cheated with his assistant. You just tell him that you forgive him. Excuse me? You just tell him that you forgive him. So that's not gone well. I think Boone is every man's ideal father-in-law. Yes. That night, Jamie thinks she sees someone in the yard, but when her dad comes to look, nobody's there, and he's like, just go to sleep, Jamie. But she can't sleep because she has nightmares about the incident we saw at the start. So she goes downstairs to speak to her mum, who tells her how important family is. Jamie's like, oh, okay, why don't you call your sister then? She's like, no. Well, that makes sense. The next morning, on her way to meet friends, she bumps into Wit again. This time, she knocks over some bottled water. He's like, I wouldn't buy those if I were you. The big industry created these things to cause cancer, birth defects. You name it. So that gives us an idea of what Wit's about. He walks with her to breakfast and tells her a bit about himself. He says he's from San Francisco and getting his law degree at Berkeley after travelling for a couple of years. They're getting on really well, so he asks her out to dinner, and she agrees. At breakfast, she tells her friends what happened with Rick. He was having an affair with his 21-year-old assistant. What? Who does he think he is? That's right, don't wait for any context. As we know, there's only ever one side to every story. Anyway, they start talking about who they can set Jamie up with, but little do they know, Jamie already has a date tonight. For some reason, she won't tell her family what his name is, and they're immediately suspicious of him because he won't come to the house. At the date, Wit has some pretty good stories. I swam into the middle of a feeding frenzy. No, what did you do? I swam into the middle of a feeding frenzy. Then Wit kicks off about a dirty glass. Can we get another set of glasses, please? Hand wash, preferably. The majority of restaurant dishwashers contain exofiala. I'm coming off crazy, aren't I? <laughs> yes. Jamie tells him a story about her past. After she won Miss Northern California, she had to do a load of appearances, and one guy kept on turning up to all of them. Then he started following her everywhere, to the gym, to her school, even to her house. Her parents didn't believe her at first, but then he started sending stuff to the house, so they got a restraining order. What happened to him? He was murdered. Which, like, good. He got what he deserved. They decide to go somewhere more private and look at this view. I wasn't traveling for pleasure all those years. I was in the CIA. Are you still? No, no. 
He's like, I want it out so I could get my law degree. And then they kiss. When she gets home, Rick is there. How did you even get in here? Your father let me in. Of course he did. Rick's like, you can't just take Preston away from me. She's like, well, you slept with your assistant. He says that's a lie, but she asked him to leave anyway. The next day, Jamie goes to meet Wit and tells him she's worried that Rick may go for full custody of Preston. He's like, don't worry. I'll use my old CIA contacts to find some information about him. So next we see Wit in what I assume is his CIA room making phone calls about Rick. The next day, Jamie gets a text from Wit saying, I need to talk to you. How about meeting at my place, 193 Hidden Valley Road? When she gets there... Something about the house seems familiar. She's like, I feel like I've been here before. Is this a family home? He's like, no, I bought it a year ago. Yeah, right. But it's clearly the house where a young Jamie didn't want to play that game in the basement. So Wit takes Jamie into the kitchen and tells her what he's found out about Rick. He's going to try and kidnap Preston. What? Wit has found out that Rick's new girlfriend, Lauren, is connected to Mexican drug cartels. Oh, no. And because he knows he wouldn't win custody in the courts, this is his only option. Jamie's like, yeah, this makes perfect sense, actually, because I'm pretty sure I saw a man outside my house the other night. Right. He tells her not to trust anyone and that any electronic device, cell phones, TVs, etc., could be being used to track her. Jamie, you are in so much danger right now. So when she gets home, she tells her mum that Preston is no longer allowed to watch TV. She's like, why? And Jamie's like, because they could be monitoring us. Her mum's like, monitoring us? Who's they? And she's like, leave me alone, mum. Later, Rick has turned up again. She starts telling him that she knows all about his plan to kidnap Preston. None of this is true. Her family are all like, Jamie, you need help. So because nobody believes her, she goes up to her room and packs her things. That's right, she's moving in with wit. They were looking at me like I was crazy. That word is offensive. There's a massive red flag right there. Yep. You're safe here with me. And then they bang. The next day, Casey calls her and tells her that they need to meet because she has some bad news for her. Auntie Loretta died yesterday. They're having the memorial. At her house. Loretta was one of her mum's two sisters. Jamie will be expected to attend the funeral, so she goes home and tells Wit. I'll come with you. It's it's a known location. I need to make sure it's safe. So the next day at the memorial service. You sure you're ready for this? Yeah, I want to support you. When they get inside, Wit's like, you stay here. I'll check that it's safe. Jamie's mum's other sister, Maddie, comes down. They've not seen each other for years. When they see Jamie's mum and sister, Maddie says that her son's here. And because they've not spoken for so long, she'd better go and say hi. Then this happens. My God, little witty. Hey, Casey. You, know, you guys haven't seen each other since you were kids. Excuse me? That's right, they're cousins. Ew, crook, Th that's disgusting. Yup, understandably, Jamie is sickened by this, so runs upstairs. Cousin Wit follows her and tells her that he loves her. He's like, it's okay, it's not like we grew up together. I think you're missing the point. But she tells him to leave her alone and that she'll be staying with her parents tonight. Good. Downstairs, Casey is talking to Maddie about Cousin Wit. I haven't seen him since forever. I heard he's in law school. I doubt that. Wasn't he traveling this last year? Wait, doesn't even have a passport. <laughs> he was denied one by the State Department. Paranoid schizophrenia. When you met this lovely girl. Next minute, there's a restraining order out on him. Unfortunately, Cousin Wit has overheard his mum telling Jamie's sister about all this. Later that day, Casey tells Jamie that she knows the guy she's been seeing is Cousin Wit. Jamie's like, I didn't know he was my cousin. And Casey's like, fine, but you need to end it now. Wit is crazy. That word is offensive. So Jamie calls Cousin Wit and tells him it's over. But back in Cousin Wit's make-believe CIA den, he has Rick tied up. <laughs> Let's talk about this, okay? <laughs> she was supposed to be mine. It's time for me to go to sleep. Back at Jamie's house, the family are discussing a divorce agreement Rick sent to her, proposing joint custody of Preston. For some reason, Jamie is still convinced that the stuff Cousin Wit told her is true. Oh, come on. So suspects the divorce agreement is some sort of trick. Her family tries to tell her she's acting crazy. Their word is offensive. And this starts an argument. So Casey takes Preston out for ice cream. After the arguments have died down, Cousin Wit comes around and starts banging on the door. Wit! Jamie! What are you doing? Where is she? If you don't tell me where Jamie is right now, I will force you to tell me. Wit! You need to tell me where Jamie is. Right now! Don't you ever talk to me like that, ever! Boone! What did you do, Wick? What have you done? Come on! Daddy? 
Mama! 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 Wit. Jamie's like, seriously, cousin Wit, what the fuck? He's like, everyone's against us, Jamie. When Casey gets back with Preston, she sees cousin Wit's car and suspects something's going on, so she goes in with a gun. Wit! Hey, calm down, Casey. I don't want to shoot you, cuz. Let's just talk hey. this through, just you and me. <laughs> So now Cousin Wit has Jamie and the gun. Get away from me! Ah! Jamie, get the gun. I'm a trained assassin, Rick. Then there's this fight. <laughs> Sadly, the fight ends there, but Jamie has the gun. Stay back. We can leave, we can go away from here. We can take Preston. Right now, we'll run away. What do you say? I say. <laughs> So Cousin Wit's dead. Rick tells Jamie that Cousin Wit had been planning all this for months, and it was him who made it look like he cheated on her. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. At an unspecified time later, Jamie's at home with her family and someone's at the door. Oh, look, it's Rick. They're back together and everyone's really happy. I love you. I love you. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.